and welcome everyone to transition time class number five. So class number five is about balancing your power. So this is a, a great addition. We had been learning in the first classes about uh, th this life, about purpose of life, about, you know, getting in and, and um, understanding the human and the human condition that we go through, understanding the ego. We learned about releasing and letting go. We learned about asking the right questions as to why, why do I feel and perceive the way I do? And then we got into understanding that the, one of the keys to you getting into the best place you can be is to get into the right part of your brain. So we talked about quieting mind chatter. And today we're going to talk a little bit more about balancing. And this one is all about balancing your power. So without further ado, let us start. Okay. So we're going to learn to do a little more balancing today. The outcomes of today are to understand the difference between masculine and feminine energy understanding the difference between external power and internal strength. And they are so different from each other, so different. Analyzing your source of power. So you're gonna take a little quiz today, okay? And then we're gonna talk about you becoming empowered. What does that actually mean? So I want you guys to have a pen and paper ready, okay? We're gonna go through this. And, and the quiz that we're gonna take I'll post it actually so you can have the quiz. I'll post it on our Facebook page, uh, the um, Inner Wisdom Circle and uh, with Kelly Schweigel. And then if you go into files, you'd be able to find it there. Not yet. I haven't posted it yet. <laughs> Today, we are also going to be really focusing in on those three treasures of wisdom. And remember that the treasures inside of you to be the most wise, happy, healthy person you can be are humility, compassion, and moderation. You're gonna need all three heavily <laughs> to be in power that is balanced. So when we think about being a balanced person, the, I explained uh, in the last class that there are three different things that, that you need to really balance. Pituitary versus pineal thinking, which is why we did the mind chatter class. Masculine versus feminine approaches to life, okay? And our next class is going to be about giving versus receiving. We talked about this in the last class. We talked about in the class before. <gasps> Pituitary versus pineal gland thinking. Remember that in this part of your brain, Remember that the front of the head is a product of the ego. It is the ego's toolbox. And the ego likes to keep you stuck, okay? It, it, it makes you focus on everything outside of yourself. There's some good things too, and we're going to talk about those. But there's also a lot of imbalance that can happen if you're only stuck in the front of the head, all right? It is going to keep you stuck caring what everybody thinks about you. In the center of your head, as we talked about in the um, opening your sixth sense, sense class. So if you haven't watched that, it was recorded and it will be on my Facebook page later today. So um, not Facebook, on my, well there too, but also on my YouTube channel. So in the center of your head, all right, this is where you're going to focus on what you feel, what you perceive. This is where you're gonna have wisdom, all right? This is where you're going to have compassion for yourself. This is where you're going to have an internal knowing. We talked about that in the Sixth Sense class, right? If you want to know more about this, go back to the Mind Chatter class. But in this center of your head, the pineal thinking, this is also going to activate power or strength. External power comes from the front of the head, internal strength comes from being in the center of the head. If you, and I want you to think about power, you could be externally powerful or internally strong. I'm gonna read these and I want you to think about these from a perspective of power. When you're in the front of the head, you care about what others think about you, okay? 
you're always going to be asking, you know, do people love me? Do they accept me? Are they going to reject me? Am I valued by them? Okay. You're going to get into wanting other people to make you happy and then getting upset or trying to control them if you don't, or if they don't, you're going to blame them, judge them. You're going to be maybe a victim to others in your world that you're going to you know, be a victim to, to everything. You're going to try to look for love outside of yourself and you're going to live your life from the outside judging you. <laughs> so from the outside in, all right, if that's the case, you're going to need power to try to control people and your life so that you can feel better about yourself, so that you can feel safe, so that you don't have to feel emotions, all right? Now, if you live in the center of the head, you're going to understand and, and seriously do this. If you're ever in a place where you're like, everything is chaotic and everything is wrong and nothing is going right and I'm just a pile of duty, okay? If you're in that place, which I, we've all been there, right? Stop, take that deep breath, get into the center of the head, open up into the center. And all of a sudden, you're going to realize, oh, my God, everything's going to be okay. I'm going to be fine. And I'm not a piece of duty. What was I thinking? Oh, I was thinking. Okay, that's what happens. So in the center of your head, you love, value, respect, and honor yourself. So can you imagine? You don't need to have external power and control. You can be in a place inside where you are like, hey. Eh, I look for my joy and happiness inside of me, not from other people. And I don't care what they think of me. If they don't like me, that's their business. Okay, I'm not a victim to them. I create my own reality. I'm just love. And this is living your life from the inside. This will affect your power. This will all become clear. Just hold, hold tight. So as we go in through, I'm gonna talk about the difference between masculine versus feminine ways of being also known as masculine energy or feminine energy okay where's your energy you know how is it how is it showing up is it showing up very masculine or is it showing up very feminine so masculine does not mean male okay lots of women have tons of masculine energy all right and feminine does not mean female there's lots of males who have feminine energy okay we all have both. And what our job to do is to balance them. Right? We want to balance them mentally, emotionally, behaviorally, and energetically. Right? When we can do that, we're going to be balanced in these two, two ways of existing. I'm talking about it right now. So masculine ways of being are being very logical and analytical and very rational okay in the way that you are it tends to focus on the outside world right we have to have some sorts of that if we're not focused somewhat on the outside we're going to be completely flighty and not get anything done all right so we need it right but it can also if we're in that part of our masculine thinking and masculine doing we're going to end up with stress we're going to end up with anxiety we're going to end up with negative self-talk. You're going to judge yourself and others. And masculine energy forces life to happen. In tarot, okay, the swords are the mind. The cups, all right, are emotions, all right? So thinking is masculine. It's a sword. And think of a sword. What does it do? It jabs, okay? So if it jabs... You know, that's the external force, fighting, making it happen, you know, competing. Where the cup, the cup is a receiver, all right? A chalice, it's going to receive water or liquid, which is emotion, okay? And so it's not, it's not doing anything, it's just receiving. But you can't just sit there and not do anything if you're all in feminine, and you can't just be over here fighting with a sword. You need to have balance of the two. So masculine can also, with its more aggressive energy can also tend to not only force life to happen, but it can tend to get you very close minded, right? It, it is very reactionary. It shatters and it sees life as black and white. Feminine energy can be very creative, very intuitive, very inspired. Okay. It can focus on the internal. It has good, positive self-talk. It uses wisdom. 
and it goes with the flow, all right? It just lets life unfold. It tends to be musical and artistic, calm and centered, and it sees life as very gray, right? Good stuff on both sides. However, if you are too much on one side or too much on the other, it doesn't quite work. So you wanna imagine like a pendulum. It can swing way over to crunchy masculine. I call it crunchy because it's like very crunchy hard thought, okay? Very analytical. So it can be controlling if you're too much in your masculine. It can be skeptical, analytical, and just analyze and overanalyze and analyze some more. And, and it can be very cynical. It can be very, you know, where you're always comparing yourself or competing. It's going to be caring about status and it's going to need power. Now, if you flow over into the flowy feminine, okay, you're going to be very allowing and very trusting, but you can also be overly trusting. You can be very intuitive, but maybe not rational. It can be very introspective and it, it can be very, have a lot of empathy and a lot of strength in there. Okay. But you don't want to be stuck there. You need to have a balance of these two in order to be wise, in order to tame the ego or live with a tamed ego, not an active one. Okay. Not avoiding it all, trying to meditate all day and not doing any internal work. No, you got to use both. You're your most authentic self. When instead of crunchy and flowy, I combine them and say you need to get into flow chi. Okay, <laughs> it's compassionate. It is unconditional love and it is expansive. So, what happens if you overindulge the masculine traits, and what happens if you overindulge the feminine traits? All right. If you overindulge the masculine, you're going to be in a, having a life where you push everything through. Oh, there are barriers in my way. I'm going to knock them out of the way. You know, this is not happening fast enough. I'm going to force this to happen. It is competition, competition, judgment, aggressiveness, rightness, always needing to be right, okay? Arrogance, control, mindful manipulation. I'm like conscious, like on purpose manipulating, okay? You're going to end up or even subconscious. You're going to not trust people. Like I said, you can get cynical or skeptical. Okay. You're going to try to be better than you're going to need to be smarter than you're going to need to be important. You're going to have anger and rage and impatience. You're going to be oblivious to your own feelings or oblivious to the feelings of others. You can get into pessimism. You can avoid or, or um, get into avoidance of any type of emotional conflict, or you might get into aggressive conflict. Okay. And you can also get into emotional shutdown, sexual manipulation, deviance, or aggression. Yeah, that's what happens when you overindulge the masculine. If you overindulge the feminine, it's not any better. Okay, you're gonna have lack of action, failure to launch. Okay, you're gonna, you're gonna start fixing or taking on other people's problems. You're gonna put yourself second at your own expense. Maybe you're gonna get into gossip and talk and maybe you're gonna get really submissive. Maybe you're not gonna speak a truth or, or be a good self-advocate. Maybe you're gonna throw yourself under the bus all the time. Maybe you're going to get into emotional manipulation. Maybe you're going to get into selfishness. It's all about me, all about me and my, my emotions, my emotions. Okay. Maybe you're going to get into feeling like you're not smart enough. You're not logical enough. Maybe you're going to get into emotional lack of trust. Maybe you're going to become gullible. Maybe you're going to get into emotional meltdowns. Everything is bad. Okay. Lack of action, lack of organization, lack of responsibility, not getting things done, scattered mind all over the place. Okay. Lack of taking things serious enough, you know, dreamy, indulged fantasies, overly optimistic, excessive drama, and sexual desperation or shutdown. None of this is great. Okay. So when we don't have a balance of our masculine and feminine, right? These are gonna come out in our ways of being and they're going to affect our sense of empowerment or the need for power, all right? It's also going to affect whether we feel strong within ourselves. Overindulgence, there's no judgment of it. We've all got it here and there. Right? We're going to have a tendency toward one or the other. Maybe we're going to be on one side one time and in other places another. It comes from our conditioning. 
Okay, we're taught in our in our childhoods and, and in our experiences to be more masculine or feminine. And usually it's out of necessity. It could be because of the removal of the feminine energies from your being. Or maybe it came from devaluating, um, uh, or I'm sorry, devaluing emotions so that you don't even communicate well. Nobody ever taught you how to communicate. And if you can't communicate well and you can't communicate openly about your emotions, well, then they're going to either be repressed or they're going to be exposed, okay, or vomited around on people. They're going to be indulged, right? It's also if these are gonna become overindulged because of fear, the fear that you're not gonna be liked, you're not gonna be supported, you're not gonna be valued, you're not gonna have control in your life, your life won't be safe, you won't win, okay, you won't be successful. All of that fear causes overindulgence. Before we go on, I want to remind you, and I know we've talked about this, but I want to remind you of the difference between emotions and feelings. Emotions, guys, remember, are low-level reactions to the human condition. They're driven, driven by fear, right? Fear you're not good enough. You're not going to accomplish enough. You're not going to have enough. You're not going to be enough, okay? Or maybe you're too much, <laughs> right? All that fear. They're going to be triggers. Somebody can say something to you and it just triggers you and you can't help the way you react. That's an emotion right? They're very reactionary to the world. They, they, they're saying that you still have emotions carry charges around memories or things that happen to you. And those emotions, those charges are still present inside of you. And they can have a wide range. You could be up one day, down the next, up one day, down the next with your emotions. They tend to be very up and down. Feelings, on the other hand, when you go through healing your stuff inside of you, you're going to get into feeling instead of emoting. Feelings are states of being that you have internally. They are contentment or joy or compassion. You might have an, an aversion to something or like irritation and like, well, that sucks. I can't believe that happened. Okay, but you're not going to have an emotional charge with it or something in your childhood or something that happened to you is still causing a reaction or charge. There isn't a charge. You just didn't like it, okay? Or you loved it. These feelings are driven by self-love and detachment from, you know, all the suffering in the world. You look at it and you go, yeah, that's all kind of purposeful. I grew best when I went through my hardship and I get it. And I don't get overly sentimental or not feeling. I feel, I feel compassion for people in this journey. But, uh, but you know, I, I'm more detached from the suffering. You know, I just love people and I care. You're operating by a tamed ego and you've become very even keeled. All those emotions rain in, rain in, rain in, rain in, and you feel. And it's much more even, okay? This will affect your power. So. In order for you to heal emotions, you need to be able to communicate about them, all right? Because otherwise, you're going to need power instead of living an internal power. It, here's what happens. You have to acknowledge or have the ability with your upbringing or even your spouse or your partners or your friends or your siblings, okay, to be able to acknowledge that your emotions exist. My daughter has a, a t-shirt that she just begged to have and she thought it was just awesome. She's like, it says, my feelings are valid. <laughs> and they are. Your feelings are valid. Okay. And, but you have to be able to have the tools to release all of these pain that, that actually you developed over your lifetime. And if you didn't get that in childhood, you're going to end up with a need for power in a different way because you're not internally empowered you're going to have reactions so the other thing that, that to heal emotions you have to realize we all have them nobody is without them nobody guys this is the way i explain it you want to look at people like this we're all just a bunch of walking wounded weirdos i'll say that again y'all me we're all just a bunch of walking wounded weirdos, okay? And when you can realize that, you can say there's nothing embarrassing to talk about. 
we all have emotions and we have to be able to not bury them. We have to talk about them. We don't overindulge them, but we talk about them. And you have to have the courage to share your pain so as to heal it. I have a comment, so I'm going to just take that. Oh, Susan, Susan says, LOL. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I want to talk about the removal of the feminine. And this isn't just men. This could be females too. Did you ever hear anybody say, man up, stop crying, pick yourself up. Don't be a wimp. Stop with the emotion. God, don't let anyone disrespect you. Hey, bros before hoes, man. Just get laid, okay? You know, disrespect. Don't let a woman run your life. Grow some balls, man up. These types of things, if you were raised with them, or if these are a part of the psyche, you're going to end up as a man or as a son or as even a woman, you know, who is very, very, very disempowered internally because you were not shown that your feelings were valid. You were not shown how to heal internally. You were taught to ignore it. You were taught to avoid them and to become, think about these say, what this says. Don't let anyone disrespect you. Don't let a woman run your life. Grow some balls, man up. What does that say? Become external, okay? And it's not just men, it's women too. How about this? Stop crying. God, don't be so emotional. Oh my God, are you crying again? Is she crying again? Oh God, you're so sensitive. Oh my God, are you PMSing? God, here it comes, all that emotion. I can't handle you when you're so emotional. Anybody hear any of these? Any of these scenarios are absolutely taking your power for something that is a natural human trait and it is disrespecting it, not teaching you to deal with it. So someone says, I always tell people we're all batshit crazy. It's a good icebreaker. It's so true, Stan. And Susan said, I dated a guy, um, that guy a few times, the one when we were talking about the last slide. And Ron says, hmm, yes, my late husband was all of these. Yeah. Okay. And, and so what this is doing, and Stephanie says, yep. <laughs> what these two ways of being are doing is it is disempowering who you are. As human beings, we are sensitive and we are emotional. And the more that we stop, um, it, the, the more that we ignore that or try to repress that, you're going to end up needing to have power in a very inappropriate way. So let me keep going because it's already halfway through. So here's what happens. The other thing is this. We're taught to compete. From the very earliest age, we are taught to compete. Performance in school, do better than your classmates, get mates, get your A. How are you doing on your standardized tests? You know, did you get the good grade? What about sports? Let's just beat each other up. Hey, let's get on some video games and win. Okay, let's, let's hurt people. And even in your work, you are taught to compete, outshine. How are you going to outshine the rest? Okay, are you getting your job done well enough? What about your physical appearance. You are taught to compete with your physical appearance. She looks better than I do. She's got bigger muscles than me. You know what? Are you kidding me? It, that's just ego. We are taught to keep up with the Joneses. Okay. And if you're not familiar with that term, that means, you know, that, you know, look at the people next door, their house looks better than ours. You know, they've got a better car. They've got a better this. All of this teaching us to compete is going to keep us in a power struggle. When I look at the world coming up, I do not see sports being a big thing, not the way they are now. When I see this world changing from grade three planet to a grade four planet, which we learned about, about in class one, I see us moving into a place where we appreciate things more like um, art and literature and philosophy and, 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 you know, interacting beautifully together, building and creating, doing, instead of competing. So I've got a comment here. Um, Susan says, my family has always told me I was too emotional. 
even now. Yeah. And uh, Kalima, Kalima says, whenever someone calls me emotional, I respond that it's better than being a zombie. Exactly, my friend. It's not wrong to be emotional. And what it, what it is, is that you want to heal the emotion. So when the emotion is present, it's there as a communicator to you that you have something to work through. It's not to be ashamed of. It is helping you to grow. It is helping you to change, okay? So what happens, yes, and I, I apologize for the finger, but this was such a perfect picture, all right? All of that stuff, all that stuff we just talked about, ignoring your emotions, is gonna have you have a cause for external need for power. Okay, if you've got buried anger and buried resentment, you're going to value competition. Okay, you're going to end up with all these unhealed emotions inside because you were taught to perform for love and acceptance. Okay, you got love and acceptance when you performed in a particular way instead of looking at what's broken inside. You were taught to be better, you were taught to win, you were taught to have more, which is ridiculous you're gonna end up a, a, a train wreck. This is what internal strength looks like. Now this um, picture over on the right is uh, the, the tarot card strength. Okay, it is a major arcana card, which is arcana cards, major arcana cards in tarot just means they're big life experiences. Okay, there's nothing mystical for for la la woo woo about it, it's just life. Okay, so the strength card shows this very gentle feminine energy that doesn't have to fight a great beast, the ego. She just tames it. And she operates with a tamed being. She doesn't need to be right, or he, <laughs> this a person, doesn't need to be right, doesn't need to be seen, okay, doesn't need to be in control or have all the power. It doesn't care what anyone else thinks. It's humble because the internal strength has come where you have learned to heal what was broken inside of you. You've come to realize being weird is a good thing. You've come to realize that you are beautiful just as you are. You have let all those old emotions go. You have really gotten into your healing. And when that happens, you're gonna have a different type of strength. You don't need external power from rightness or brawn or any of those things. You're gonna have perseverance. I'm gonna, it's okay. You wanna beat me down today? I'm gonna to keep going. Life, you didn't like me? All right, that's fine, I'm gonna keep going, okay? You're gonna to have tenacity. Bring it on, world, I will make it through. And resilience, I will bounce back. I will bounce back. It'll be okay. This is strength, okay? I wanna show you one other thing and then I'm gonna give you some, some examples. External power, guys, is basically a big neon sign that says, I don't love myself or I need your approval. So I'm either gonna control you, manipulate you, take it from you, make life happen, start to get forced, it's, it, it is wounded. It is actually internal weakness and it needs importance, okay? It is an indulged ego that has to have control and power or it doesn't feel safe. And if you take that away and look underneath it, it's just pain and wounding. Somebody who's looking for validation outside of themselves or is living from fear that they're not enough just the way they are. I was doing some couples counseling the other day and uh, the, the man said, well, you know, I, 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 you know we're, we're just getting into a place where we need to find the right people to hang out with. I said, who are the right people? Well, you know, people who are class and, and, and are from a higher place. And I'm thinking, oh, we have a lot to work on here. <laughs> I said to him, what about if it doesn't matter what status the person comes from, they're just a beautiful person? Well, that's not the way I was raised. Well, it's actually a good way to look at people. 
we're all equal. And you can look at people as equal when you tame what's going on inside. So I want to give you an example of some situations. And I, I think I saw um, one of my friends from Belize on here. And I'm going to share a story that happened there. And when I was in Belize, I had this situation where I was uh, at a house party and they have a, they had, she had a little stage on, in her living room and there was a band up on top and they would always call me up to sing. And so I came up and I sang, you know, I was dancing and I sang a few songs and la la la. And then I came down off the, off the stage and everybody was kind of like in this living area, um, in this kind of like audience area. And I'm walking across like where we had the dance floor and this woman stops me and in front of everyone, she's like, I hate you. And I was like, oh, she's like, you, you think you could be the little free spirit out there dancing all over the place. Well, that's my husband up there. You just, you stay away from my husband. I almost didn't come back to this island because of you. And there was nothing inside of me that took that personal. Nothing. I had nothing to trigger, nothing to react to. I was just like, wow, she must be really hurt. I didn't have to use external power to say, I demand an apology. How dare you disrespect me? What the hell is wrong with you? Nah. You know what I said to her? I said, do you, do you want to go talk? And she just looked at me <laughs> and she's like, yeah. And, you know, I just went down to, and sat on the stairs and talked for a while. And she ended up crying and saying she loved me. You know, it, it's when we don't need to use that external power. That is weak. It takes a lot more strength to get inside of yourself and find your compassion. And say, I like myself enough that I'm not going to be reacting to that. I reined in those emotions. and was able to have the, the strength to talk about my pain inside. And I did. I've talked about it. I share all my ugliness. You know, and, and you know, by doing that, it helps others to heal around you. Big different way of thinking and, and existing. So this is a private one. Um, she said, you have your hands full with that one. <laughs> Yes, absolutely. That was a private message. So I want you to think about this. When you need validation, when you need that power externally, when you need to flaunt your power with money and things and your body or whatever it is, okay, that's all ego. The internal self can be very humble. It takes courage to see your wounding. It takes courage to show your vulnerabilities. It takes courage to be wrong. It takes courage to let others think less of you. Think about that one. It takes courage to be wrong or to let others think less of you. It's weak to, to, to try to bully through something. That's just weakness. It's harder to do something inside. It takes courage to be unique and different and move to the beat of your own drum. It takes courage not to be resentful and angry. It takes courage not to expect others to take care of your happiness. It takes courage not to need an apology. It takes courage to have compassion. Right now, I, I, well, I've always had this um, belief that you can't really work with narcissists because they can't see their own ego in operation. And you can't really work with those who have detachment disorder because they have no conscience. Okay. But I've been challenged. My guides brought in probably the greatest challenge I'm ever going to have working with someone. And it is probably the strongest narcissist I have ever worked with. And I am working to help him to see and be vulnerable with himself. It is not easy. Not easy if you have put up such barriers to protect your weakness. It is not easy to let those barriers down to see it. 
big breakthrough. He finally saw that his ridiculing people and criticizing them and belittling them and his cynicism is just the ego. He couldn't even see it before. And it's taken me months of working with this person. Okay. It takes courage and he has a lot of courage to try. I love this lady. I've lived too long. I've healed too much. If you want to tell me that one and one is five, well, I'm going to say you are so right. <laughs> this is a painting by Steve Cole. And I, I don't remember where I saw that saying. It was on something I saw somewhere, but I just loved it because it's just so it. It takes a lot of internal strength to not care if you're right. It takes a lot of internal strength to not think you're better, to not have to be better. It takes a lot of internal strength to sit in your humility without being the martyr. It takes a lot of internal strength to not be vic the victim, to rise above it. Yeah. So get your pen and paper, guys. We're going to talk about external force or external power versus internal strength. Okay. And what I want you to do is anytime you find yourself on the, the first example, you're going to put a one on your paper. Every time you see number two, you relate with number two. You're going to put a two on your paper. Okay, did everybody get that? And I'll give you which is a one and which is a two. Okay, so I'm going to give you a situation. I'm going to give you scenario one, scenario two. And you're going to put a one for one, or if you're a two, put a two. So here's the situation, number one, or situation. Somebody has wronged you. Do you, number one, demand an apology because they wronged you? Or do you, number two? Share your truth or set a boundary and then just leave it alone. Okay, which means that if somebody wrongs you, you're like, hey, that wasn't cool. And I don't agree with what you said, but I can't make you change. Leaving it alone. Feel into it. Are you an apology demander or do you just kind of set your boundary and leave it? Here's the next situation. You're in a competition. Do you have a strong desire to win, 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 win? Or do you just do your, you know, that's number one. Or do you number two, just do your best, knowing that the outcome doesn't really matter. Situation, someone is mad at you and insults you. Do you, one, yell or insult right back at them? Make them feel as bad as you do? Or do you, two, have an inside voice of wisdom? That says, ooh. They must be unhappy. And you share truth or set a boundary if needed, and you just let their anger be theirs. Next situation. In a conversation, someone needs to be right, and you believe they're totally wrong. Do you, number one, let them know you that they are wrong, insisting on your rightness, proving it to them? <laughs> or do you, number two, just share your truth calmly, but you don't need to be proven right. It doesn't really matter situation. Something in life is not working out very well. Do you keep pushing? This is your number one. Do you keep pushing, pushing, pushing until you make it work out the way you want it to? Or do you, number two, realize that pushing and forcing in life usually just makes things go worse. So you look at other options or stop going in that direction altogether. Situation. Someone wants to physically fight with you. Do you, one, meet the challenge head on? Or number two, you know that they're playing into their egos, so you try to find a peaceable solution and walk away or walk away. Feel into this. We're going to do a little bit more. Are you ready? Situation. You're in a group project or activity. Do you, number one? Need to take charge and be in control of the situation, be the leader? Or number two, do you, I don't know what that says because this is in my way, hold on a second. 
or do you work collaboratively working with a, as a group member let me see if i can move this there we go working well as a team this is your number two working well as a team member only taking the lead if it's natural and helpful for all involved so you're collaborative all right situation you're in a social situation with a very educated or smart people do you number one make sure that you show how smart and educated you are or number two you're just you knowing that if your intelligence is to be seen it'll be seen because it came out in a natural way you don't really need it to be seen situation in social or school situations do you number one need to shine above the rest or number two you're just you and you do your best that's it situation life gets hard do you one throw a tantrum get angry work feverishly hard or take your frustration out on those around you or two you do your best to deal with the situation knowing you'll get through it and it's just a trying time you look inside of yourself and ask what lessons you're learning you use your tools your box of emotions you're healing your younger use you talk to a trusting adult or friend you get into flowy thoughts situation you have a big, big challenge ahead of you do you number one push and force through the challenge or two you meet the challenge by staying calm, centered, and clear-headed. Just if we'll do four more and then we'll be done. Situation. You're being criticized, bullied, or made fun of. Number one, do you criticize, bully, belittle, or make fun back? Or two, you use your inside voice that tells you that if that person were happy in themselves, they would not be doing that to you. Do you stand up for yourself in a calm, self-respecting power, but you don't criticize, bully, or make fun of them back? Situation. In conversations, one, do you need to have your opinion heard? Or two, do you listen more than you need to be heard? Situation. In social situations, do you, one, need to be like the most liked or most popular or two you are who you are and if somebody doesn't like you that's okay and last one will do someone situation someone ridicules what you're wearing or what you look like do you one say something back to put them in their place or take them down a notch or two do you stand in your truth and set a boundary saying that it was it was not a nice thing to say but you don't get upset about it because you know that they would never say that if they were secure in themselves and incidentally that narcissist did that to me totally made fun of what i was wearing ah! <laughs> so i'm going to stop the share for a moment and see what you think how did that go for you so there are a couple of private messages. So one of them said, this is interesting. My response is consistently two, but my ego tries to make me feel shame and guilt for not going with one. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. So I wanted to share with you that the ego, when you try to tame that ego, guess what happens? It ends up fighting you. It's like, it's like you just took away its nookie, its, you know, its pacifier, its bottle, and its blankie all at once, and it's going to throw a tantrum. So it's going to try to keep you stuck if you try to tame it. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. So another private comment says, there might be a need for a three. The two is a balanced person. There's the option of just giving in because we feel we're not good enough. That's also ego indulgence. Okay. So that's, you're right. There, there could be that, you know, that you're just not, you know, things aren't there, but, but the ego is still indulged. Shutting down is still ego you know, happening, right? And what's happening is that you're turning this instead of externally powerful or internally balanced, you're in a place where you're just like, I, I, yeah, I got nothing. I'm just driven by icky fear and ego. So Michelle says, um, she said, yeah, I feel hurt and I suffer quietly. <coughs> Ron says, excuse me. 
uh, there were only two, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, he says, there were only two scenarios where I was wobbly, otherwise in a good place right now. Good, but he's been working for a while. Uh, so um, Stan says, in some situations, neither one or two fit. And that's what people are saying, that it might be a need for a three. Um, Stephanie says, all twos um, to all, but one to wanting to be heard. Sometimes I don't care. <laughs> Cindy says, about half and half. I love that honesty. Thank you, woman. She says, I see that I don't react to the extreme, but still react. I have more work to do. You know what? And that's the thing. Most people do. <laughs> you know, and, and there are times, even with all of the work that I've done, I still will have sometimes where I have a reaction and I'm like, oh man, really? Do I have to be, I had a human moment. And then I have to say that. I'm like, I just had the biggest human moment. So sorry. <laughs> it happens. So here's a uh, um, private one. Um, so on a couple of them, if it's my spouse, I'm a one. But with others uh, or someone I'm not, that's not my spouse, I'm a two. And that actually happens. But you can see with your spouse, those are the ones you really want to want to watch because that's where you're really being tested. Okay. Sometimes it's easier to do it with other people, but you got to watch the ones in your immediate circle. That's where you're going to see it. Okay. So here's another private one. She says, um, on some scenarios, it's, it's different with spouse than with others. Oh, yeah. And that's what, what this other private one just said. So Kathleen says, there were a few scenarios where I see myself in the middle and shifting into a two. Otherwise, it's mostly twos. Yeah, and Ron gave it a, you know, yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah. So, so yeah, you're going to see that. You're going to see that by taking this. I didn't give you the full test. I'll post the full test online. There's a whole other slide for this. But we're, we're going to run out of time, so I want to make sure that we keep going. So I'm going to share the screen again. So there's the rest. <laughs> so you guys remember in um, the very first classes that we had, I talked about throwing an angry hate bomb. Okay, remember an angry hate bomb is an insult or, or criticism or judgment or blame or telling somebody how they feel or blasting an outburst to someone or taking your frustrations out on someone or just, you know, trying to be in power and control, manipulation. Okay, that can all be angry hate bombs. All that is external power. If you throw one back, guess what? That's external power. <laughs> if you dodge angry hate bombs, okay? You're like I, am, like I did with that woman who came up and said she hated me. And uh, um, you know, basically I just dodged it. I was like, I, I can't play with that. That's internal strength. And trust me, I've had times where I've had the external. <clears throat> but I need an, an example for internal strength and I, Glorify the time that I did. <laughs> now, what about if you catch it and put it inside as hurt and wounding? This is the scenario three you guys are talking about. That's disempowering. And so this, this is an effect on your power. Okay, if you're hurt and wounded and you beat yourself up and you feel bad, all of that is disempowering. Empowerment, guys, is this. It's the process of becoming stronger and more confident, especially in controlling one's life and, and claiming one's rights. That's actually the online definition. This, what this actually means is this. Empowerment means that you have the power to be upset and to, to say, I'm upset. And doing that without anger. There's a class on, actually a few classes, about balance of power or speaking a truth without anger. Okay, you want to watch that if you're someone who gets upset, but you have to be able to speak your truth without anger. Empowerment means that you have the power to set boundaries with people, even if they don't like you because of the boundaries. Empowerment means the power to say no, the power to speak your truth, the power to be different. It is the strength to be internally strong, not externally powerful. Internal strong also means empowered inside to love yourself with compassion, to not beat yourself up, to not go into shame and guilt because you had a human moment. You're going to have many human moments. Guess what, guys? You're human. <laughs> 
that means you get those human moments. So <clears throat> let's see, I've got a bunch of comments here. Uh, oh, so Stan says, hmm. <laughs> uh, yeah, somebody says privately, oh, okay, uh, I will answer that privately to someone. Let's see, um, so this is another private one where someone says, I live with a narcissist. I see her pain and try to avoid her and let certain games go unnoticed. I send good, good vibes, but every time she gets upset with me, she talks about kicking me out. So I've been trying to leave without success. I'm not sure what the lesson is. Ooh, that's an interesting one because that narcissist is in your life for a reason. And I will tell you that your, your external reaction, okay, that's just part of the, 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 um, the experience, all right? That's good. You want to have a good external reaction, but 50% of your life lessons are how you react internally. So if she makes you feel bad or if she's taking your power or if she's making your life miserable or any of those things, that's the internal. It could be that you still have an internal lesson to learn with it. Okay? so. Let's talk about how do you actually get in and balance your power? What do you do? Well, first of all, you have to really learn to observe yourself. You have to watch how you show up. And the minute you catch yourself <laughs> in external power in action, you celebrate it. You don't beat yourself up. When you catch yourself shutting down, you go, oh, I totally just caught myself. Okay, I'm not going to feel bad about feeling bad. I'm just, I caught myself. Okay. You just seek the courage to look inside, okay? Seek the courage to say, why do I take something personal? Why do I want to control? Why do I want to be right? I remember when I realized I needed to be right all the time. It's because when I was young, as a kid, I thought I was stupid. I had no idea I was intelligent because I didn't learn the same way. So it's about having that courage to look inside and ask yourself why. And then exercise your courage to speak your vulnerable, raw truth. You're not afraid to talk about your emotions. You're not afraid to talk about why you feel somewhere or some way. You're not afraid to expose your hurt and wounding so that you can be understood. Okay? You're not afraid to see. <clears throat> so I have some notes about, remember how I said this takes compassion for others and yourself, and it takes moderation. Moderation means a balance between masculine and feminine, external and internal, strength and power. Humility, I have some notes about. As you become more internally strong, you're going to become so humble because, again, you just don't need to be right. You just don't need to have the power. It does, you realize it doesn't serve you. You realize it's just a neon sign saying, oh, I need your approval and I don't love myself. I don't feel like I'm enough. I need to take it from you or prove it to you. And either you shut down or you get some other external way. As you start to become that type of humble strong, please stay away from the following. Do not school others on their external behavior. You know, you're just being externally strong, not internally or externally powerful, not internally strong. You know, you're just indulging your ego. You should really try to get inside. Don't school anyone. Don't. Don't. It is not your place. That's part of the humility. You, that's just trying to be right. You don't need to. They're going to figure it out on their own when they are ready. You don't school people, okay? Unless they come to you and they ask, then you can talk with them. Stay away from letting mind chatter entice you to be external. That's what Kalima was talking about. She's like, I feel like I'm a two and then I, my ego tries to get me to feel guilty for not being a one, okay? It, it's going to try to entice you to be external. Don't let it. Stay away from needing people to recognize your internal strength. That's being a martyr. Okay, nobody wants a martyr. Okay, you know, it's about being internally strong quietly. And if somebody happens to see it, okay, they see it. 
stay away from beating yourself up for having those human external moments because you're going to have them. And remember, humility does not mean thinking less of yourself than you do of others. It does not mean becoming the martyr or treating yourself unkindly. Internal strength, guys, does mean it does not mean throwing yourself under the bus, like putting other people's needs ahead of you where it's going to be damaging to you. Don't do that. Stand at an internal strength for yourself as much as you do outside. All right? Stand in that beauty. You do not become a secondary person by being hum in, in humility. You don't. You become number one to you internally. That's what you do. Okay, remember, you don't become a secondary person. You're just humble enough where you're like, I like myself, so it doesn't matter whether you like it or not. Okay? Humility, compassion, moderation. And I'm gonna go to comments, but I'm gonna finish with this thought. You need power only to do something harmful. Otherwise, love is enough. Compassion is enough. When you allow yourself to be love and you have compassion for other people's situations and your own, you're going to be in a place of internal strength. And that was actually a quote by Osha. So, got some comments. <clears throat> this is a comment from... Um, Michelle, she says, maybe the lesson with a narcissist spouse is to learn to set boundaries and say no with compassion. Oh my God, that is ultimate strength. You're right. <laughs> You're absolutely right. Okay. But it is, again, the, if you look at your family and your, your closest friends and your, your children and your, your spouse or your significant other, those are where you're going to see you. That's where you're going to show up. So they're the ones to pay attention to most, okay? Um, Kathleen, Kathleen says, yeah, the ego doesn't like humility. No, nope, the ego does not at all like humility, okay? And yet Kalima says, that's a hard one, particularly if you think you can help. Yeah, when I talk about um, not putting yourself first, you know, uh, it, <coughs> it, oh, or I think she might also be talking about not schooling someone. Guys, here's the thing. You don't get the right to teach someone unless they come to you. I see so many people that I could give advice to when I watch them showing up in life. I don't say a darn word. If they need to find me, they'll find me. If they want to watch these videos, that's what the videos are here for. I put it out there. It's up to you to find it, right? So if you want to teach it, teach it like this so people can find it, but don't school them. We don't have that right. And I want to tell you that when somebody is ready to change, the right experience will come in to help them change. Don't force the change. It's not your job. I love seeing all those shakes. Head nods, head nods. <laughs> okay, it is 8.02 my time, PM. Just starting to get dark here. And, um, and it was a wonderful, wonderful class. I will post the rest of the, uh, the, uh, the quiz for you to look at. And I think, I think I love the suggestion of making a three. And private message, I can't right now. I've got to go. I'm, they're waiting for me for dinner because there are guests upstairs. My, where I moved, uh, my boyfriend lives right up here in, in the um, house up on top of the mountain and I'm down in a little bit down the mountain. So I have to go up the mountain and, uh, and chat with, uh, we, he's got some friends here. So who are, came from Vienna. So I need to go in and, and see them. So I'm sorry I can. Um, so here's a couple other things. Um, when it is a habit of taking care of others, so it is so automatic, but to not become exhausted by doing, by the doing or the giving. Right, exactly, exactly. So lots of thank yous, mwah, mwah, mwah. Nice to see you all here. We had a really beautiful um, group, Not nice, uh, nice collection. Bye guys.